so common and well trod by the shoes of burden Christians who won't put the trust in God. Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and I'm so glad to be with you today. I'm in the book of Galatians. I hope you've been following this series. This series has really been a wonderful, wonderful series. And I love the little book of Galatians because actually it's the identity verse of our, script, of our ministry, actually. The one verse that we really quote over and over and over again is our identity verse, and that's in Galatians 2.20. And it talks about being crucified with Christ and we live, but it's not us living. It's really Christ living. And I wanted to talk a minute about that because what does that mean? I don't live any longer. It's Christ living. And the Bible saying, I am crucified with Christ. It's not, Paul's not just talking about himself. He's talking about every born again Christian. Actually, he was talking to Peter at the time. Now, if we remember, Peter was a great apostle, great I mean, you talk about Mr. Pentecost, he was Mr. Pentecost bringing in, you know, the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. So, but he did not know his identity in Christ. That's very shocking. Most people think, well, once you really know the Holy Spirit like Peter, then you would know your identity in Christ. Well, evidently he didn't. So that's, there's proof there that people that even know the Holy Spirit are not quite sure in who they are in Christ. Well, because we've got to understand the indwelling spirit within. We've got to understand that it's not us that lives any longer, that it's Christ that lives inside of us. Well, the Bible in Romans says that, uh, well, Colossians says this, and also Romans says it. Romans says we're dead to sin. And Romans also says we're dead to the law. And Colossians just says, you are dead. Well, that's a kind of startling statement. You are dead. Why do we have to be dead? Well, that's the whole point of being born again. <laughs> we are born again of another spirit, the spirit of the living God. Okay. And so the actual act of baptism pictures is an, is an out picture of really dying and rising. So the whole gospel, the point of the gospel is that we died with Christ and now we're risen with Christ. So it's not like Christ was just there 2,000 years ago, a lonely Savior dying for my sins. And I'm talking to saints. I'm talking to people that really already know the Lord, that know the Holy Spirit. I'm talking to you. That Christ, in His resurrection, we were there in His crucifixion. We were there in his, res in his resurrection. We were with him and now seated with him far above principalities and powers in his ascension. So you see, we were one with him when he, was, when he died on the cross. Well, then why did we have to die? Well, because we were living a life. We never have really lived our own life. We've always lived a life of a spirit that operated us. And we often, I often point to this scripture. And it's in Ephesians where it says we were living according to a spirit, the spirit of the, the prince of the power of air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Of course, we know disobedience is the people that are not, have not come to Christ by faith yet. And so they're disobedient because it's presented and but if you're refusing it, you're being disobedient. Okay, I was disobedient. We all were until we came to Christ, until we yielded ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ and became born again. Well, when you were born again, you became a new creature. You were born again into a new spirit reality. Well, you were born again into a new identity. Not and we were born again with the Spirit of God, and that's wonderful. I mean, I don't even think you can understand what I'm even talking about unless you have the Spirit of God. So I'm certainly, you know, speaking to saints. And Paul said this to the saints in Colossians. He says, this, there's a mystery, and it's to the saints. It's not to the world. It's to the saints. 
and the mystery is that Christ lives in you and he's the only hope of glory. So you see, that's exactly what Galatians is saying. Galatians is saying that we died with Christ. Well, what does that mean to me? What does that mean? I mean, that can just be some kind of platitude or big statement I'm saying, or I can just read a bunch of scriptures that say I'm dead and I'm crucified and I'm dead to sin. And we can just kind of read those. But what, what really does that mean to me? Well, actually, I believe every person has to experience what it means to be dead in Christ. I think that's very important. You see, otherwise, we really think we're living our own lives. We do not know that there is another that's living inside of us, that it's really Christ living inside of us. We don't know that. And so I think, you know, we can save those things, but to truly know it, somewhere in your life, you've got to know what it means to be dead. Well, I always say, what can a dead person do? When you really know you're dead, what really can you do? Well, well, I mean, that's pretty simple. I mean, it's pretty logical. What can a dead person do? A dead person can't be good. Wow. A dead person can't be righteous. Actually, a dead person can't even sin. <laughs> a dead person can't do anything. I mean, you know, that's just logical. I don't need to continue with that because you know, you know what I'm saying. A dead, so when you really know that you died with Christ, you will know that in and of yourself, you can do nothing because you're dead. Bible declares it. Holy Spirit will bring that reality as a truth in you. So it can be an experience inside of you. Now, I didn't like that experience. It was pretty, pretty radical for me. Pretty radical because um, I was doing pretty good having Jesus help me and knowing Him and knowing the Holy Spirit and, you know, feeling good and feeling high in the Spirit and understanding things in the Scripture. I didn't, didn't think I needed to know I was dead. Well, uh, the Holy Spirit knew better because for me to really know and have the reality, have the Spirit reality of what this, this new identity in Christ really means, I had to experience it to the depths, and I did. Went through a terrible depression, which I often talk about. I talk about it because I think it's the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my life. Well, people would say, Sylvia, you're kind of crazy to think the greatest thing ever happened to you in your life was a depression, but yet, that depression stripped me from all the false hopes of me believing in myself, my own power, my own understanding, my own wisdom, my own life. You see, it stripped me from that. And, and I knew I was dead. Well, then I always say, what can a dead person do? Nothing except be available for somebody else to raise that dead person from the grave. Well, guess what? The Holy Spirit raised me from my dead place. And you don't know, when He raised me, he, he truly brought me into a new reality, a new spirit reality. A lot of people would say, well, maybe that was the baptism of the Spirit. I had the, I had the Holy Spirit before this. So it wasn't really that experience. It was an identity crisis. It was an identity experience that I had. So I started, I, I absolutely saw things from another point of view. And I think that's exactly, Christ, Christianity is meant to evolve. It's meant to come forth in us. You see, it's a living reality. It's not just something we learn and, okay, we've got it. And, you know, I mean, pretty soon I would be real bored if, uh, okay, okay, I've got it. And it's, you see, when it's a living reality, then it's always new. It's always bringing life inside of me. It's always bringing peace inside of me. And that's exactly what happened to me. I was raised to a whole brand new reality, a whole way of seeing, a whole, whole spirit reality. And I knew that I was seated with Christ far above principality and power. Satan didn't have me anymore. Well, well before this time, and before you know you're dead, I really think that's why the importance of this knowing you're dead in Christ, knowing you're crucified with Christ. As long as you think you're alive, you're going to be subject to what Satan has to say to you. 
because Satan will constantly say to you, okay, Sylvia, then um, uh, you do this and you better try that. And he's always accusing you and you're always going down. You're always thinking, oh my gosh, what do I have to do? What do how, can I, how can I be a better person? How can I uh, 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 do better in my life? How can I speak better? How can I uh, learn better? What can I, how can, do I pray more? Do I read my Bible more? How do I get better? How do I improve, you see? I'm still alive when I'm thinking that I have to improve. Wow, I'm still alive. You can't improve a dead person. The Bible, Paul, the Apostle Paul, the foundation of our faith, the foundation of the truth of this gospel lies in that fact that we died with Christ, that we are dead. And God blessed me with the greatest blessing of my life by, by revealing to me how helpless I was to live the Christian life apart from the indwelling spirit within, his spirit in union with my spirit, and then knowing that now I'm alive in him. You see, now the devil has no power over me. As long as I think I'm alive, the devil will have power over you and he's going to accuse you and you're going to be under this condemnation, under this guilt, and you're going to try to live under the law trying to improve yourself, you see. Ah, oh, now I know this, there's a strange little verse. It's one of my favorites and of course somebody said to me a long time ago, Sylvia, I think all these verses are your favorite. Well, maybe, they may be. This one blesses me. It's in chapter 6 of Romans. It says a very little interesting, it's a big thing. It says this, For he that is dead is freed from sin. He that is dead is freed from sin. So if you as a Christian <laughs> want to be free from sin, know you're dead in Christ. Know you're crucified in Christ. That you no longer live. Christ lives in you. Wow, that's, that's dynamite. I mean, the devil does not want you to know this, but that's dynamite. Now you might say, but Sylvia, how in the world can I say Christ lives in me? Well, let me tell you what. I started saying it when I was, when I was absolutely acting the opposite. I was doing one thing and acting the opposite. I couldn't call that Christ, but I had to stand in faith and say it against what I was doing, what I was manifesting, how I appeared, how I looked, how I felt, how I thought. I had to stand in the faith of what God said about me and identify myself with Him. And you might say, well, I don't know about that. That just seems so radical. I mean, are you saying that you are God? Did you become Christ? Oh no, never would I say that. I'm a human, but I'm the human form of him expressing himself by me and through me. I can say that. Well, how can you say that? Somebody wrote me one time, and because I often say Christ lives as me. Well, I, they said, how can you say that? I said, well, who else is he going to live by? I mean, who else is he going to live through but by me or as me? It looks like me. It feels like me. That's exactly what Galatians 2.20 is saying. It's saying he's going to be manifested and live his life, not your life. Remember, you're dead. And remember, now it's his life living as you. Wow. And that's a life of rest, a life of peace, a life of overcoming all, this, the, all these accusations from Satan, a life free from sin. And you think, oh my gosh, I, Christians can't ever be free from sin. What are you talking about, Sylvia? Bible says that we're dead to sin. We don't realize the Bible really means what it's saying. That we really, it really is telling us the truth. We really are dead to sin. Why? Because we're, we're not living our own life. You see, that's the whole key. The whole key of not being what everybody says all the time. I'm just a saved sinner and I just sin every day. The key to have victory over sin, over the devil, over the world, and over what everybody else thinks about you is to stand in the truth of what God says. Who's going to be true? Is it going to be you? Is it going to be other people? Or is it going to be God? Well, I think it ought to be God. 
Now, what I want to do right now is one time somebody asked me, and I've got a little booklet. It's on the internet, and I'm getting ready to put a whole bunch of more booklets on the internet in my bookstore. And you might want to call, uh, just write me and get some of these books, or probably I have them right in uh, any of my, the written material I have. I probably have them all there free. If you want them free, there, there they are. But one of them is called Christ Living as You. And I thought, wow, that is a radical thing to say, Christ. Somebody wrote me and said, Sylvia, now, I'm a Bible teacher. Now, how in the world can you say that? Where do you see that in the Bible? And I thought, well, you know, that's, gosh, that's pretty legitimate. I need to go ahead and find out. So I said, Holy Spirit, where is this in the Bible? Show me. So I, I, I'll write another little booklet about it. So, because... Christ living as, as, as if it's me. You see, that's what it really is. It's Christ living as if it's me. It comes out by me, but it's really He living by me, as me. You see, that's really what it is. All right, well, the first thing that came to me was the thing that happened to the Apostle Paul at the, the Damascus Road when he was thrown off his horse. And, um, and Jesus spoke to him from heaven and said, uh, why, Paul, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Well, Saul was killing the body of Christ. And, he, and Jesus said, you're killing me. Well, Jesus identified with us as him, too. I mean, the Bible says he's the head, we're the body. Okay, so then I started seeing all these other verses. Now I want to read you some of these verses. Here it is. Now Luke 10, 16. This is Jesus talking. He that hears you, he's talking to his disciples. Jesus said, he that hears you, hears me. And he that despises you, despises me. And he that despises me, despises him that sent me. My goodness, that sounds like union to me. Sounds like he's saying that whenever your uh, people despise you, they're not despising you, they're despising Christ. Wow. Okay, Matthew 10, 40. Said, Jesus is talking again. He says, he that receives you, receives me. So you mean when I go somewhere and people receive me, they're not really receiving Sylvia, they're, re they're receiving Christ? Are we going to believe Jesus? I think we better. He that receives me, receives him that sent me. So he not, doesn't just stop between me and Jesus. He's saying, if you go somewhere and people receive you, they're not receiving you, they're receiving Jesus. And if they receive Jesus in you, they're really receiving God the Father. Wow, that's pretty big. All right, let's go again. And when Jesus prophesied of his coming in glory, this is what he said in Matthew 25. For I, and this is, he's talking to some people that wondered, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, there were people that came to Jesus in Matthew. Some people came to Jesus in Matthew, and uh, they, they started bragging about everything they had done. We raised people from the dead. We did all these marvelous works. And, and, and Jesus says, oh, I, I, I never knew you. I don't even know you. I mean, you might have done all those works, but I don't even know you. Now, we don't want Jesus to say that about us. Now, there was another group of people. This is in Matthew 25, starting with verse 35, going to 40. And they said, and, and they said for, uh, and Jesus said to these people, When I was hungry, you gave me meat. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was a stranger, you took me in. When I was naked, you clothed me. And I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you came unto me. Then said the righteous and said to him, Lord, when, when did we see you hungry and fed you or thirsty and gave you drink? When did, when did that happen? When, when, we saw, when, when saw we the a stranger and took thee in? In other words, when were you a stranger and when did we take you in? We were just taking a stranger in. We didn't know that was... You, you're identifying yourself with that person? Wow. And when were you naked and we clothed you? Or when, when you were you sick and we went to the prison and visited you? 
And the king answered. Now, this is when Jesus is coming in his glory. This is what he's going to say. Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto the least of these my brethren, you've done it unto me. Wow. So Jesus is identifying himself with us. And we can't identify ourselves with him. Why should we not? I mean, I think we dare not. We have to. We have to. We have to, you all. We have to. We have to agree with Jesus that when we go somewhere and a person receives us, they're not receiving me. They're receiving Jesus. Well, I'm telling you, that humbles me beyond words. That should humble you too. It doesn't make us proud. It doesn't make me feel like, oh my gosh, now I'm God and everywhere I go, everybody's got to bow and scrape because I'm Christ. No, it should humble you to such a place. I can't even take it. I can hardly believe it. Really, we can hardly believe it. What we do, we have to take it by faith because Jesus said it. We can't make him a liar, people. We got to make him saying the truth. He is the truth. Now, so how, how can I not identify myself as him when Paul says that you were crucified with Christ? You live, but it's not really you living. It's Christ living in you. And the life you now live in the flesh, you're living by the faith of the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. So that means you're not living under the law. If you're living under the law, you're not taking this by faith. You're making... You're making Jesus a liar. You're making the Apostle Paul a liar. The Apostle Paul says you don't live any longer. It's Christ living. Now, then you say, well, wait a minute. What about when I sin? I can't call that Christ. Well, I'm not asking you to. If you actually sin, which I always say is rare. I mean, we think we sin every day. It's because we have a sin consciousness. That's the reason we think that. I mean, the Bible says that our consciousness needs to be cleansed so that we can serve the living God. You see, if I'm really an empty vessel, empty of myself, because I know that I've died, but I know that Christ now has come to live his life in me, to live out through me, then how, what kind of life is this? This is a life that's going to give itself for everybody else. This is a life of, of sacrifice just like Christ, you see? Now, people say, well, oh, th well, maybe you're a doormat. Oh, well, Jesus was no, no doormat. Believe me, Jesus was no doormat. You know he wasn't. Okay, think of this. When he said, when he, th when he said, no man takes my life from me. I'll give it up voluntarily of myself, but no man takes my life from me. Oh, wow. That means I'm not a doormat. So you Pharisees, you can come here, you can accuse me, you can say all this stuff to me. You're never going to take my life from me. And I'll come back and tell you the truth about you too. And it might be hard truth. That does not mean that that is not love. Jesus was nothing but love. But love doesn't, uh, love speaks truth. Speaks the truth in love. Sometimes it's hard. I mean, when he went to the temple and took the whip out, he wasn't too nice. Well, that was love. That was still a form of love. Because... Because you see, we're so deaf, dumb, and asleep, we don't even see. And sometimes we need some, somebody to rattle our cage to sometimes before we can even see what God is saying about us. I'm telling you, this is probably the most important thing for people to understand as Christians. I mean, we always want to move out and look at the exterior. What, what's going on? Wonderful, wonderful thing. The Holy Spirit is moving in wonderful ways this day and time. Out from us comes what? Living water out from us comes miracles. Out come, people are being saved. People are being transformed. And people are even being raised from the dead. That's wonderful. But we get so enamored with what's going on outside that we forget about the identity of who we really are in Christ. You see? And I, I tell you what, in Luke 10, the disciples, after they had raised people from the dead and they had done all these great things, he sent out 70 to do the works. He uh, imparted spirit, the Holy Spirit to them so they could do it temporarily. They came back bragging, oh, look what we did. You won't believe what happened. Well, that's wonderful. We would all get excited about that. Who wouldn't get excited about that? Jesus says, uh, wait a minute. Mm, I saw Satan falling from heaven. Yeah, he did because the Holy Spirit was moving greatly. Yeah, but, but Jesus, you, don't you can't believe that. We raised people from the dead. We did this. We did that. He said, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I did give you power 
to tread on serpents and nothing would hurt you. But I want you to remember one thing. Just be happy that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And, you know, don't be so impressed, you see, with what God's doing out from you. That can end up with spiritual pride. We don't want spiritual pride. You see, I mean, Satan fell because of spiritual pride. Relig the Pharisees had spiritual pride. That was satanic. Jesus called them the devil because of it. No, no. You see, now, well, well what's humility? Well, what if I feel pretty proud? Well, I might feel it. But you see, I'm pretty thankful that I can be on TV. It doesn't make me proud about me. Oh, I know. I don't live any longer. It's Christ living in me. All the glory goes to Him, don't you see? All the worship and praise goes to Him. If you're living under the law, believe me, let me tell you what you'll do. All the praise and glory will go, go to you. It will go to you. We don't have any bragging rights when we see Jesus. You think we're going to be bragging about what we've done? The disciples tried to do that, and he says, uh, 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 just be happy. Your, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Be happy for what I've given. Yes, sir, God wants to manifest through us in a magnificent way. But just remember, it's not us. It, it's, it, it's really Christ in you. And you know what? Because when you're back looking at yourself, you're self-focused again. You see, A.B. Simpson said a wonderful thing about humility. He said this, humility is not thinking little of ourselves. Now, I don't have to think little of myself, but I don't have to brag about myself either. A.B. Simpson said, it's not thinking of yourself at all. That's true humility. Why? Because out from you flows the river of living water. I can hardly stop and think of what in the world I'm doing. I can't remember what I did yesterday. I can't remember because it's the Holy Spirit pouring out through us, you see. It's the life of Christ pouring out through us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I, it causes me to worship Him, to love Him, to... to and this, I mean, it's the reason that I want to share this with all the precious people in the body of Christ and the reason for this program, The Liberating Secret. So I'm glad I had this time with you today, and I'll pick it up again the next time I'm with you. So thank you so much for being with me, and may God richly bless you. Goodbye. You have been listening to The Liberating Secret with Sylvia Pierce. We want to send a special thank you to all our supporters who make this program possible. If you have been blessed by this program and would like to contact Sylvia, you can write her at P.O. Box 43268 Louisville, Kentucky 40253. That's Post Office Box 43268 Louisville, Kentucky 40253. You can also find more of Sylvia's teachings on her website. The web address is www.theliberatingsecret.com. That's www.theliberatingsecret.com. And be sure to listen again right here Monday through Friday at the same time for The Liberating Secret with author and teacher Sylvia Pierce. So until next time, may God richly bless you.